Hi guys, welcome back to Advanced VR Fair. I'm Ben and I created this video because I think it's pretty interesting for onward players, overall for those who first approach this game. First of all, what is it, Onward? It's a war VR game with very accurate game mechanics so that it could be defined as Milsim and its military simulator with different game modes in single and multiplayer. The beating heart of Onward is the multiplayer and overall the competitive games team versus team that recall the biggest part of Onward players. Unlike the other competitive games we already know as Call of Duty or Battlefield and other games of the genre on PC or the most recent Population 1 in VR, Onward is a more tactical game that requires a great teamwork, planification and overall coordination between members of the team. The type of game is very similar to the old Rainbow Six like Raven Shield for example, a game where if you do a good planification before the game, you have very high chances to complete it. In Onward, there are single and multiplayer game modes. The most played modes are Uplink, the one played for the official tournaments, and Assault. The object in the two modes is the same, just a couple of rules changes. In Uplink and Assault, players are divided into two teams, the attackers, called Marsuk, and defenders, called Volk. The goal for Marsuk is to capture the uplink, while for the Volk is to prevent the capture. The team starts from opposite point on the map. Usually Volk spawn near the uplink. Winning a game is possible by killing all members from the other team or capturing the uplink within the time limit for Marsuk and defending the uplink to the end of time for Volk. As I said, uplink and assault are similar, but what changed? In uplink there is no respawn and you back in game on the next match, while in assault, when you die, you can back in game after 15 seconds. For Volk, in the assault mode, some areas on the map cannot be reached, so they have to stay within the uplink area to defend, while Marsuk have a bigger area where to go. In uplink mode, anyone can go anywhere. On assault mode, one of the members in Marsuk play as team leader, and this gives the chance to the other members to spawn not only on A and B, but also on team leader spot. Within the most played game modes, there is the cooperative, and it's a team of players against a certain number of bots controlled by AI. In this mode, is it possible to set number of bots up to 128 and difficulty level. At higher levels, bots fire immediately and are more precise, but they just run straight into you because the AI is almost known in this game. The game ends when all the bots are neutralized. A little different mod for the cop is the escort, which is about escorting a VIP to the extraction point and even in this mode you fight against bots controlled by AI. There are also the shooting range, where you can test all the weapons and then the free roam. Very useful to know all the maps without have to worry about enemies or to try tactics with your team. After you choose the game mode, you enter into the game, the so-called tent, place where the team prepare before the game, the briefing and choosing the equipment. There are four classes. For each of them, you can create two loadouts. To create a loadout, just pick the class, click on empty loadout and select primary and secondary weapon and other equipment such as grenades, C4, gap, night visions and syringes used to heal yourself or your wounded teammates. To create a loadout, you have a certain amount of points at your disposal that in multiplayer is reduced compared to the single player. So you cannot bring everything you want, but you have to choose wisely. In base of the class you pick, you have access to different equipment. A rifleman can use short and middle range rifles and essentially is the one assaulting on the front line. Specialists can use short range rifles and explosives, such as the C4 grenade launcher built in on the main weapon. Support can use heavy guns that essentially are used to make covering or saturation fire, for example when you need to keep your enemies down while the rest of your team advance. Snipers can use long range rifles, the so known sniper rifles. This class is the one less used in game for a series of reasons. First of all is that there are few open and large maps in Onward, just two or three and its downfall, quarantine has no pick. 
There is also Abandoned, but even if it's large map, it's plenty of coverings that makes the long shooting very hard. Also, the long range suffer because of connection problems if your internet connection is not perfect. Otherwise, lag and delay will make hitting the enemies impossible. The equipment is distributed all over your body. Main weapon is on your chest, secondary weapon is on the side on your belt, sirens are over the holster and grenades are in the pocket on your chest, while new magazines are in pockets on the left on the belt. When equipped, night vision is on your head and to activate you have to bring your hand over your head and press the button on the controller to activate it, while on your left shoulder there is the radio to talk with your teammates when you are at distance. Even in this case, to talk, bring your hand on your left shoulder and press the button to open the comms. When you're nearby, is it not necessary to use the radio because you can hear the voice of your teammate and keep in mind that even your enemies can hear not only your steps but also your voice. About grenades and explosives, keep in mind that when you launch a grenade, you have to remove the secure first and when you place the C4, you have to activate with the remote to make it explode. The C4, if placed too close to the uplink, will not activate when you try to make it explode. A very important element in Onward is the tablet. Learn how to read the tablet and you make good part of what you have to do in game. It shows a part of the map and the position of your teammates, showed by green dots, and the position of your target. In uplink, the tablet is essential because it shows the code you have to put in to capture the uplink. The operation is simple, but if you lose the tablet along the track, it's impossible to capture. Moving in onward is the same as all other VR games. You move with the left thumbstick, while you can set the right thumbstick to turn left and right, useful for those who play the PC version linked with the cable. To crouch, you physically have to go down, you cannot climb anywhere, you can lie down on the ground and the character will take the same position in game. In uplink mode, win the team that kills all the other members in the opposite team or for Marsuk if they capture the uplink. To do that, you have to go near the uplink unless on the tablet you don't see the button send uplink. You can type the code on the number pod and in uplink mode victory is immediate. In assault mode, after you put in the code, you have to hold on the uplink for a minute. Volk, meanwhile, can insert another code to deactivate the attacker's code. Teamwork is everything in Onward, so planification for attack and defense is very important. So that every member in the team know exactly what to do, where to go on the field and which movement to do during the game. Planification is made inside the tent before the game starts, on a whiteboard showing a map. Team leader can use pens of different colors to draw fire lines, movements and fire sectors or any member can use a pen to indicate his movement using a different color. Attackers can indicate the different way to reach the uplink, while defenders can indicate the different spots where to camp to defend the objective. Well, this is actually an introduction more than a guide how to play onward. And once you acquire these basics, you only have to apply on the field. Try to improve always more your knowledge about the strategy and of course improving your time of reaction. Okay, thanks for watching, like, share, subscribe and ring the bell. From Ben it's all, see you to the next one and see ya in VR. Bye guys.